Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albina Rana Beer Review. And today we have the cartoon <laughs> Rhino. I'm sorry, we are drinking what? the horny the cartoon. cartoon. <laughs> the cartoon. The horny we are cartoon. drinking from the Flying Bison Brewing Company in Buffalo, New York. We are uh, drinking smooth Buffalo. Move your fat fucking fingers. <laughs> Buffalo Kulsh Rotate. 716. There you go. <laughs> I don't understand the name. What does it mean? Kulsh? Kolsch is a style of beer. I did not know that. Uh, Kolsch is a German style of beer. Okay. It's uh, a... Yeah. Yeah. What, what is it? Is it just like... 5.6% alcohol? Thing? Yeah, it's just a thing. Kolsch is a style of German beer that is native to Cologne or... Ah, Cologne. Cologne. <laughs> and it's one of the most drinkable beers on the planet. Uh, Don't be the motherfucking judge of that. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> we will be. As a you, know, of fact. you know the Germans. Loggers, Pilsners, Kolsches. It's all good times. Like, yeah, let's do it. All different styles of, of I like Dunkel. And of, of loggers. I like Dunkel. So this should be very blonde in color. If it's if it's gonna be right. Jumbo. Jumbo Lyo? Eight. <laughs> Squiggly box. So again, 5.6% alcohol. You wouldn't find that on the bottle. I had to actually contact Tim and the crew to find out the alcohol percentages of these because it's brewed in New York State and the New York State Liquor Authority believes that a beer brewed in New York should not have the alcohol percentage on it because you would automatically pick the one with the highest alcohol percentage. Because you, you don't want to drink a beer, you just want to get drunk. Maybe they're just hiding it. Maybe it's seven point one six percent. Anyway, um, a little darker than the other Kolsch's I've had, but it, it looks like you it fits the ones? style. I've had a couple here. We have not really? had any that I remember. We, he himself has twelve hundred reviews. Yeah, yeah, but, but you know what though? Like I'm probably around six or seven hundred myself, and I've never come across one. So I don't know. Um, nice white head. It has a little bit of viscosity. I know viscosity doesn't matter to everybody, but it's a nice little visual appeal tool. It's a weird smell. It's almost like, um, it almost smells like they mixed the, the American pale ale hops with Belgian yeast. Mm, kind of. That's a very odd Not to get that. technical, but... Uh, I, I know, I know from <laughs> I'm being... I'm not able to, but I think we're supposed to. <laughs> I know from being in the brewery that he loves <laughs> using both German hops and German malts. Mm -hmm. um, every time I've been there, and I've been there twice now, it's just filled with different styles of German hops and mm -hmm. German malts. Uh, it smells like there's a bunch of noble hops in here. Uh, malt, truthfully, I don't... Yeah, you can follow them on Facebook, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's that's a, yep. Facebook and Twitter. Facebook and Twitter. It. Tweet it. Okay. <laughs> Um, and Tim is an amazing guy with one of the most epic mustaches you'll ever see. It's true. Like, like Lady Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. Oh, I like it. it smells really good, though. It actually kind of smells like a Pilsner without the earthy tones. Let's try it. I'm in. Tastiest beer on the planet? No. Most drinkable beer on the planet? I wouldn't say yes, but it, it, it might be up there. A well done Kolsch, though, just slides right down your throat, just like a Pilsner. I'm not a huge Pilsner fan, but a well done Pilsner is very refreshing and very, very easy drinking. Not a blue Pilsner, a real Pilsner. So, uh, you need a lager? <laughs> or wherever they are now, corner themselves. It's weird. It's a strange sweetness. Like I can't tell. Like I can't tell if I'm tasting that macro corn flavor or if it's like a banana Belgian yeast or some dirty love child. I'm not sure. Frape, perhaps. Yeah. But um, what, whatever it is, it's just making it super easy to go down. Yeah, I I get some of that beautiful, beautiful malty taste right up front. Then I'm not exactly sure what I'm tasting in the middle. And then the end is a build-up of all those just German hops. 
you get a little bit of an earthy tone, you get a little bit of a grassy tone, they're all just back there in your ba the back of your throat. Yeah, but they're just, they're way back there. They're really just chilling out. You are so used to putting it down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> Saw it, heard it, love it. But yes, very easy drinking. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I know for a fact he's not using corn. No, beer. no, no, I know that. But, but I like, know exactly what you're talking about, the taste. I wasn't was. trying to say there was anything bad about it either. I'm just saying, like, as far as, like, a, a, you know, associating and familiar, uh, familiarizing people, uh, you know, or try, trying to get some kind of a reference point, um, the taste, is that's what I'm getting. I'm getting a very, very positive... Well, you got to remember, right, the macro lagers, even though they're not real beer, according to most people, and even though they are very flavorless, mm -hmm. they all started as something like this, a very easy drinking lager, mm -hmm. and over time they just kept adding more and more ingredients that were easier and easier to drink and less and less expensive. Because yeah, exactly. they wanted more and more of a water taste <laughs> and a cheaper and cheaper beer for a bigger and bigger profit Well, of course, profit ba batches and so, bigger batches and higher profit, yeah. I mean, truthfully, you get a very well done lager of any style that's done to like proper styles, and it's it's going to be a lot like a macro. It's going to have more flavor, but it's going to be a lot like a macro in the fla in the in the taste palette and in the mouthfeel. And this this hits that. I mean, yeah, I'm not a huge, but, but but the flavor is there. This, it's yes, real no, that's flavor. what I'm saying. This has flavor. But it's it's mouthfeel and it's drinkability and all that hits a lot closer to. This a makes me style. wish I had a pizza in front of me right now. Yeah, this would be great. Beer. This, this, this would is be a beer. great hockey game beer. It's this no would be Jenny a great Light. basketball beer. No, it's no Jenny Light. You're right. <laughs> um, truthfully, I'd give this a seven five. I would buy this again. I would drink this again. I could go through a six pack of this easily. You know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go as far as an eight. This this like makes me like, like this makes me want to drink a beer of this color, which I never do. Um, well, this, that's truthfully you know. the reason my mark is so low. Isn't that the beer isn't good? It's that this is not what I would drink. Well, it is what I would drink now, but that one though, that one, just this one. <laughs> that's it. Like, that game. This now, right for here. those of you that are not privy to trying any Flying Bison products, they're based in Buffalo. I believe it's Ottawa Street. Or Ontario Street. Um, I think they're in both. I'll put the address in the description Live of the video. guy reading? <laughs> uh, I'll probably do that for you. No, it's not on here. Right. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's Ontario Street now that I'm thinking about it. Um, very great guys there. Great beer. Aviator Red is amazing. The uh, Rusty Chain is pretty good. Well, the Logger's pretty good. Too. That was all right. Yeah, the Aviator Red. Yeah, I remember that one. I had um, that one. Again. Flying Bison Brewing Company available all over the Buffalo area. Not much further than that, though. Try it if you get a chance. The Buffalo Kolsch, I like it. He really likes it. Tell you right now, so far, two for two. Two breweries I know that are named after animals that aren't supposed to fly but are flying. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Bye. So, monkeys and bison? Yeah, man. Yeah, however fun monkeys are supposed to happen and have since uh, 1919. They don't fly. Uh, Wizard of Oz is stupid. That's right. It's not real. Uh, yeah, it is. I know. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. No, it's not. Wrestling's it's not real. No. What? You're dead to me! <laughs> Wrestling is totally real! What are you talking about? It is real! It's still real to me, damn it! You just sounded like the, That's the bucket of hurt right there. The bag of pain. It's so hot in there. Yeah, no, totally, this shit totally doesn't get warm. Hot. What up, internet? Oh, yeah, thanks. Oh, hey there. Bye. <laughs>